Good evening. I'm Elder Steve Mills. I feel honored tonight to be able to bring you our nightly devotion, in the Apostolic Tabernacle of Ecclesianus. And uh, I want to go to the Lord in prayer right now. There's many needs out there. Uh, I, I feel like the, God's going to move in a special way. God gave me a message here a while back. Begin to speak to my heart a message, and I feel like tonight is the night that I'm supposed to deliver this message. I'm going to keep it as short as possible because it is devotion night, but I do feel like the Lord has spoke to me to somebody's heart tonight, so please don't take this lightly. If there ain't but five people hears this tonight, somebody is going to receive this message. So let's go to the Lord in prayer, continue to pray for surrounding circumstances that you know about and and uh that I may know about that you don't know about. So let's go to the Lord prayer right now. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we ask you to speak to us and help us and help us in this time of trying hour. But God, we know that there is victory in the name of Jesus Christ as we come to you and believe you and trust in you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Have you got your Bibles tonight? If you would turn them, please, to the book of Psalms, the 30th chapter, and I'm going to be reading from the 12th verse. David said this. David said, I am forgotten as a dead man out of mind. He said, I am like a broken vessel. David said, I'm like a broken vessel. But what I want to preach to you tonight is, God will not leave the vessel broken. And that's what I want to talk to you about. In this psalm, it's a Masonic psalm. And in this psalm, Jeremiah quotes for this, from this. In Jeremiah 6 and 25, he quotes from it. And he's quoting out of fear. And he's quoting out of sorrow. And uh, even Jesus Christ himself quotes from this psalm. Uh, especially in the point where it says, Into thy hands I commend my spirit. It, that come from this psalm. This was a broken vessel. And so we go over to Psalms, the 34th chapter. And it said, this is the psalm of David when he was changed, when he changed his behavior before Amalek, who drove him away and he departed. And if you look at this down through here, uh, David begins to talk in this Psalm here, and he says, if you look at the 17th verse, Psalms, and it's 34 and 17, he said, the righteous cry, and the Lord hear up, and deliver them out of all their troubles. And he said, the Lord is nigh unto them that are a broken heart, save such as of a contrite spirit. Now, if you look at that word, a broken heart, it means someone that's almost been crushed by a hammer. If you look that up in the, the, the Greek or the Hebrew here, uh, it's like someone's been crushed by a hammer, that type of brokenness. And it says, evil shall slay the wicked, and they that hate righteousness shall be desolate. The Lord delivereth the soul of his servants more than uh, that trust in him shall be desolate. And I, I want you to think about something. Uh I said that this psalm came from when David, uh, in fact, it comes from 1 Samuel 21 and 10. It talks about that David was fleeing from Saul and because he was on the run. And we find out that he fled down to the Philistine king. This is David's old enemy. And he winds up at the old enemy's house fleeing from Saul which should have been a place of safety, but it wasn't because Saul had become his enemy. And David here feels like he's a broken vessel. He's, he's man, I'm broken and I'm contrite and, and all this. And he feels like he's just broken down. And he finds himself at the gate of the king of the Philistines. And it says that, uh, uh, and David rose and fled that day for fear of Saul and went to Achish, the king of Gath. And the servants of Achish said unto him, Is not this David the king of the land? Did they not sing one another of him and dances and saying Saul hath slain his thousands and David his ten thousands? Is this the same David 
that killed his ten thousands while Saul was just killing his thousands? And he's down here? What's he doing here? He's our enemy. And, and it said when David heard this, any other time, this is not the same David that was on the field fighting the giant because he had no fear. But I'm going to tell you, when the devil puts fear in your heart and fear gets a hold of you and you feel like you're broken down, you come to a point that you feel like that you can't accomplish anything. You feel like you're way down here and everything's on top of you. And this is the way it was with David. And the Bible said that David was afraid of this king when he heard these words. And he changed his behavior. And he acted like a madman. He said he fringed himself mad in their hands and scrambled on the doors. He took and he clawed the doors. And he let spittle run down his face like he was a madman. And he wanted him to think that he was a madman. And the king said, have I need of a man? A madman that you have brought this fellow to play the madman in my presence. Shall this fellow come into my house? And the Bible said that David's full of fear and he told him to leave. The king told him to get him out of here. I don't want him here. And David is running again. And and uh, and so David relates back to it in this psalm. And he talks about how the Lord delivered him. How the Lord took care of him and all of that. And I heard a little story, and it, and it said a preacher uh, told a story one time, and he said there was, uh, years ago, he said there was some rabbits fleeing in terror from a strong brown creature which began to follow them with a slow serpentine movements. It was a weasel. The preacher was puzzled how a slow animal like a weasel could make a faster-moving animal like a rabbit his prey. Later, he read, the weasel has an unsatisfied thirst for blood. It singles out a particular rabbit for destruction and persistently follows his trail, neither losing the scent of his victim. It is generally a long chase. The rabbit makes a dash ahead of them, a double or two, and he returns to the mouth of the hole. I don't know if you've ever been rabbit hunting. But that's the way rabbits do. They'll come right back to where they left off at. And, and he said, he makes several more, uh, he, he, he makes, the weasel may pass several more holes along the way. But he passes them up and pays no mind. He's after this one rabbit. He's on his trail. He will not stop. And the rabbit just keeps running. The rabbit runs from field to field. And it says, and, uh, but he, the chase is still on. The rabbit is tired to death and hides in the grass. But across the field comes the weasel. And he said he's slowly coming. He's inching his way along after the rabbit. Let me tell you something about evil sometimes. God allows evil to come in some people's life. And the, he's like the weasel. The, the evil is like the weasel on the trail of the man that needs to be broken. I'm going to tell you today, God can't use you till you're broken. God can't work in your life as long as you're full of pride. I'm going to tell you, if we refuse to humble ourselves before God, God will allow evil or the presence. It's God's weasel on our trail to break us down. But let me tell you something also about the grace of God. Though the, the, the evil may come against us. And it says evil will slay the wicked. And they that hate righteousness. But it also says in Psalms 34 and 22. The Lord redeemeth the souls of his servants. And none of them that trust in him shall be desolate. So what is David saying? David said I don't know why God did it. I, I didn't deserve it. I lost my trust in God. I've lost my faith in God. But even in all of this, God delivered me out of the hands of that Philistine king. Hallelujah. And he is excited about what God's doing. And I'm going to tell you, God will not, he will not leave us a broken vessel.
but he'll put our life back together and he'll make a change and what was broken, God will fix it and repair it. Then we can be used of God. We got to get the sin out of our lives. We got to get things out of our life that shouldn't be there. And sometimes God's weasel will get up on our trail. I thought about another uh, place in here. It talks about uh, Israel was sinning against God in Isaiah 30 and 12. And it said, Wherefore thy uh, does say the Holy One of Israel, because you despise my word and trust in oppression and perverseness and stay thereon. Therefore, this iniquity shall be to you as a breach ready to fall. He said, your walls are going to come tumbling down, Israel, swelling out in a high wall. He said, who's breaking come up suddenly at an instance. God said, Israel, I'm going to allow you to be broken down. I'm going to allow your walls to fall. He said, and he shall break it as a breaking of the potter's vessel. And he said, he shall not spare so that there shall not be found in the bursting of the shroud. Two, uh, he said, there will be enough left even to take fire from the hearth or to take water out of a pit. But I like the 18th verse. You just go down just a few verses. And it said, and therefore, will the Lord wait. The Lord's waiting to see what you're going to do. The Lord's waiting when God breaks down and does a break it in your life, then the Lord stands back and pauses and see what you're going to do with His grace and see what you're going to do with His mercy. I'm going to tell you, when God puts that weasel on our trail sometimes, it's the grace of God. It's the mercies of God. It's to bring us to a point of prayer. It's to bring us to a point of submission. And I like what it says. And therefore the Lord wait that he may be gracious unto you. And therefore will he be exalted. And he may have mercy upon you. For the Lord is of a God of judgment. Blessed are they that wait for him. Hallelujah. One more thing. I was thinking. Uh, it talks about that Moses went upon the mountain. God gave him the Ten Commandments. The laws of God. While he's on that mountain, the children of Israel built themselves a golden calf. They went off in the idolatry. I tell you something, God ain't going to accept sin. God don't look over sin. But God's grace and mercy, when a man will repent and confess his sin, God will forgive him. And I thought about their dancing around the golden calf. They're having the time of their life in their idolatry. And Moses comes off that mountain and breaks those Ten Commandments. But if you look over in just a few verses, a few chapters, we find out that God begins to speak to Moses and said unto Moses in Exodus 34 and 1, he said, and the Lord said unto Moses, hew thee out tables of stone like as unto the first, and I will write upon these tables the words that was in the first tables, which thou breakest. What's God saying? Yeah, I'm mad too. Yes, I was mad, but because Israel is repentant, because Israel wants to get things right, I'm not going to leave the vessel broken. I'm not going to leave the situation as it is. You get those Ten Commandments back down there to them. You read them my laws and renew my covenant with them one more time. God bless you tonight. We appreciate you. We feel the Holy Ghost. We feel like God has spoken. There's somebody out there listening to me tonight. You ain't got to stay like this. You can be like this if you really want to. If you just turn to God and say, God, here am I. God, use me and forgive me and help me. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you tonight.